hello. Um, I'm making another video. It's been so fun making these um, during sheltering time for coronavirus food videos. I've been doing a few videos on making kimchi, and then I thought, um, particularly for Pacific Northwest folks, um, just currently, I wanted to do a short and sweet little nettle video because the nettles are um, really great right now. They're in their you know beginning stages of spring growth, so they're kind of small, yummy shoots. And if you can get out, um, I know that we're all staying in and um, social distancing, but if you have you know, a wild space that's near you, that's, you know, under canopy where they might be growing, um, I highly encourage checking it out if you haven't before. They're just a really delicious, good for you, um, wild green. So what I'm going to do right now is just um, quickly take you through the steps of making um, nettle tea, which is uh, really tasty and a good way to get all those beneficial um nutrients, vitamins, and minerals. So I have a pot of water um, behind me that I set to boil. And basically what you do is I um, am going to make a gallon batch right now. Um, basically what you want to do is just take for a gallon's worth of nettle tea that I brought the water to boil, um, I have a half a pound of nettle. So I'm not de-stemming them. Um, I'm using a long tongue and no gloves because they are stinging nettles, and I'll talk about that um, in a bit. But I'd say anywhere from a quarter pound to a half pound of nettles per gallon. Um, that'll make a really like vibrant, full-flavored tea. But use whatever you have and you don't need to weigh. That's just sort of my, um, my preference. So brought it to a boil, turning it, the, the heat off, and then you just sort of dunk and get your nettles in there and just kind of push them down so that they're all submerged. And then we're just going to let that steep for, I'm talking really loud, oh, it's echoing on the bowl. Um, let that steep for 10 minutes. So I'm going to set a timer. And then in the meantime, um, I, you can just talk about nettles and other things that you can do with them. Um, so basically, just for that, I just have a gallon jar, you know, you can use whatever. I'm using a, um, a reusable coffee filter to just, so when it's done steeping, I'm going to just tongue out all of those nettles, and then I'll, you know, you want to just filter it, and, um, and then you can drink it right away, you can drink it cold, you can reheat it. Um, I recommend, you know imbibing it within a couple of days because it's just freshest and, and best then, but it'll taste good and it lasts for a while. Um, oh, and then for anyone who is, um, who's watched the first few YouTube things that I ever did in life, um, the tutorial for making kimchi, my kimchi is now on day four. Um, so I did my last video yesterday and it's awesome. And I think that, um, I think that by tomorrow morning, I'll put it in the fridge and that'll be uh, a good place for it. It's, I mean, as in like, it's, it's sour, it's the crunchiness level that I like, it's gotten funky. So, so that's just an aside. Um, so other things, the other main thing that I really love to do with nettles is I love to make pesto. Um, so basically my way of doing that, so I have a recipe that's in my cookbook that comes out in the fall, dumplings equal love. I'm not gonna go through that entirely because sort of the point of these recipes, um, what I'm trying to do here is just sort of show you ways that you can you know, forage, ferment, do fun things that are gonna feed you and sustain you um, with what you have. So we don't need the particulars, we just need to know um, if you want to make a nettle pesto, what I like to do is I take my nettle leaves, so let me press pause on that and backtrack. Um, when you are foraging, you want to just do the foraging basics. Wear whatever you have, wear, wear long sleeves and pants that cover up all your skin because stinging nettles are 
appropriately named. They are super stingy, um, and they have these little hair. I have some here, yeah. They have these little hair-like structures on them. I don't know if this will translate. Little light hair-like structures. You can't really tell. Um, very, very prevalent on the stem, on the undersides of the leaves. The tops don't have that much to protect them. So when you brush up against them, touch them, um, there's folic acid and other um, chemical components that are on the um, plant to get you to not touch it that leaves your skin really tingly and in a not great way. Um, sometimes for just a short amount of time, sometimes for a long amount of time. Also, you know, as you get older, like I don't really mind a little bit of um, stinging nettle on me. Um, but, you know, the younger you are, it can be pretty painful. So try to avoid it. I once took Ruben when he, my dog back there, um, who's now 12, he's Malamute Shepherd. I took him nettling early on when I moved here. Um, when he was quite, he was a puppy. And he, I just was so dumb. I didn't think about it. He got them all on the pads of his feet and it hurt him a lot. So don't take your dogs meddling, okay? If you do, leave them in an area where they are not going to tromp around on the nettle leaves. Um, so we have six more minutes. I'm just checking my timer for the, for the tea back there. So you've gotten your nettles, a couple other nettling basics, um, just foraging in general. Oh, foraging tip if you live in the Pacific Northwest. Um, I love John Kalis and his Wild Food Adventures, so check that out if you haven't been on one of his um, foraging workshops. He is an expert. Um, check out his books as well, his website. He's a great, great resource. I've gone on all sorts of, um, I've, not, I've not foraged for nettles with him, but um, all, all sorts of, uh, you know, wild greens, and we've gone... Um, Cockle clamming, I've gone out on Salvi Island and collected. Those are really fun and super informative. Um, so consult, like don't just go out there and um, willy-nilly pick things. Like, know what you're doing, do your research. Um, also always think about the environment and pick only what you are going to use right away and enjoy. You know, don't overdo it, like don't go to a buffet with your eyes bigger than, you know, your stomach and, and take too much and take, you know, few and far between so that the ecosystem can easily repair from the harvesting that you've done. I usually take, um, I usually take, uh, so these plants, this is the top few leaf sets. There was uh, like about another foot. So I take the tops off um, of them and that's it for now for that. So nettle pesto, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pack my leaves down. Um, so if you want about um, a couple cups of nettle pesto, then you're going to want, um, how much is it? About three cups packed of the leaves. Um, so that's what, I'm not going to make this, uh, in this video, that'd be too many things, but, but this is for my future, um, two cups of pesto. And then you want to just quickly blanch them. So, um, drop them in your boiling pot, um, lightly salted 30 seconds, and then, you know, spider them out, um, put them into an ice water bath until they cool off. So it keeps the color um, shocks them really quickly so they don't continue to cook. Um, scoop them out, chop them up, fluff them up, and then you know you, you make your pesto how you would normally make pesto or often would make pesto, which is, um, so I'm going to give you the food processor way. So I toss my chopped, coarsely chopped um, blanche nettle leaves into the food processor. I um, Put my garlic into the food processor. I like a pretty garlicky pesto. Um, toast whatever nuts you're using. I, I prefer hazelnuts being here. I love them. Um, but this is um, some pecans and walnuts just because I happen to have them. And I'm using what I have. So I'm trying not to go to the grocery store um, at this point for another, I think, three and a half weeks. So we'll see. I'm trying. 
Um, so that's what this is. Toast those, throw those in. Um, and then I finally grate whatever hard, semi-hard cheese I have. In this case, um, this is Pecorino. I usually use Asiago, whatever you want, you know, a salty, nice cheese. Um, and then I have my lemon juice. I'll probably use about half a lemon for, for this batch. Um, and what I do is, so I chop up the nuts, the garlic, the, um, the nettles. I was about to say arugula. Um, and then, you know, get that all blended in the food processor. And then I drizz, slowly drizzle in my olive oil, my lemon juice. Um, and then I'll, I'll, you know, get it all out into a bowl. And then I'll fold in um, my salty cheese. I'll taste it to see how much salt and pepper that I want to add. And then I'll add that. I don't like to freeze pesto, so I do kind of smaller batches like that. I mean, I guess two cups isn't that small of a batch, but I want to make what I'm going to use and, you know, within a week for sure, within a few days, hopefully. Um, I just don't, don't really care for it. I think it kind of loses a lot of its punch and flavor and freshness when you freeze it, but a lot of people like it that way. Um, I have a minute and a half left, so I'm going to quickly also tell you... Um, Another thing that I love to do with nettles is I love to dehydrate them. So I'll snip all the leaves off. I have a quite large Excalibur um, food dehydrator that I actually won at the um, All About Fruit Show. If that sounds intriguing, look it up. It's a really, really cool thing that we have um, in the Northwest that you can attend uh, and, and identify fruits and try all different types of home orchardist fruits, but, um, what was it? Oh, so I got a dehydrator, a, a very large one. So I just pack it with leaves. I mean, enough so, so that like air can go through obviously. Um, and I will set it to the highest setting, which is 155, 160, 165 in there. I can't remember. Um, I should have pulled it out and I will do that. I will dehydrate for about two hours and I'm kind of every half hour or so going in there and kind of tonging things around, moving it so that if they're hotter pockets, so that everything is drying out. Um, even if you do like an hour and a half, you'll often still have some of those folic acid, um, uh, tiny hair-like structures on them that make you sting. So um, yeah, I just recommend the two hours and then I'll, you know, throw it into, if it's a large amount, into a... Um, food processor and, um, and make a powder. And so this powder is really great. I use it um, for dumpling skins. Um, so I have a recipe in Dumplings Equal Love that is a nettle dumpling recipe. So it's nettles on the outside and on the inside. So it's like caramelized onions and nettles and, and nuts. And, um, and then I, I put this into the skin. So they're this like nice woody greensy color and they have just a pretty pronounced nettle flavor in them. But you know, you could use this in breads, you could, you know, any type of way that you would use um, powdered leafy greens, you could use it in smoothies, stuff like that. So um, that deeper was because uh, this tea has been steeped for 10 minutes now. Um, so I'm going to see, I'm going to, I'm going to resituate this a tiny bit. Oh shit. Sorry. Resituate that was the little plug in heater that I have in here to keep it a little warmer. Um, I'm going to do like that. I'll just move it over here. Whatever. Uh, all you want to do right now is, um, I'll move this trivet is we want to, uh, Retrieve, remove. I'm just going to discard these, I mean, compost these nettle stalks because for me, um, I got a couple grocery bags worth, really fruitful there. Um, I don't want to eat nettles that have been cooked this long, in, it, it, usually, because I like them fresher. Um, and I, I didn't also stem them. And the stems are kind of woody and reedy. They are, these are spring nettles. Um, so they definitely, if you have the smaller shoots like these, I would eat the stems on those. They're still good, but they get, you know, more fibrous and woody, the larger. So just kind of shake them off, you know, 
Um, it smells so good. I wish there was smell of vision. Um, it's sort of like a green woodsy spa in here right now. Um, and then yeah, I'm just eat. move this over here. See that? Yeah, and then I'll use a pitcher. So it's a little less awkward. And then just strain it. Um so good for you. You know, I'm not sure of all the vitamins and minerals. I know that there's a lot of iron, um, potassium, vitamin C. I also know that one time I was getting sick and I, in the spring, and I collected a grip of nettles. I got a whole bunch. And I drank, I don't know, I think I had a couple cups of tea. Uh, and I felt better pretty remarkably soon. And I'm not making any health claims here. I could have had something mild that I would have fought off anyhow. But I do really feel like um, now is a really good time for the healing plant, healing properties of the plants that surround us. Um, kind of get us, keep us fit and fit as a fiddle so that we, uh, and protect ourselves and our loved ones during this crazy coronavirus time. I'm just going to pour the rest in here. And, uh, you know, if you don't love the flavor of this, obviously you can add, you know, some mint, some fresh mint. That's all going right now, too. Some lemon balm, Think other things you have in your garden. You could add some dried um, herbs or spices as well, you know. I just happen to be a big, big fan of the flavor of nettles. Other things that I like to do with them, um, I'll just saute them quickly in olive oil and then spritz them with whatever citrus I have and a little salt and pepper. Um, what else have I done? I mean, really, I think all of those things are, are primarily what I do. I know a lot of people like to really, um, you know, give them good long cooking. I don't. I think that they lose a lot of their vitality. I mean, definitely their health properties, but no, I just like them really lightly cooked um, or as a tea. Let me see. I did make a short list here. Yeah, so I think that I covered everything on making really yummy nettle tea and then just nettling in general. Um, but, you know, do, do additional research and kind of um, ask around and see, you know, where people are finding them and um, be, be good to wherever you're getting them. Oh, this is a funny one. Uh, I don't know if you know that Frank Zappa song, uh, Watch Out Where the Huskies Go and Don't You Eat That Yellow Snow. Mm -hmm. Stay away from right along the trails if you're in a park, you know, in, in certain areas. Watch out for the... For the dogs, if you know what I mean. All right. Um, obviously, polluted areas. You know, you want to always also give them a good rinse when you get home. Um, but and they'll get they'll have some critters on them. So you often what I'll do is I'll you know I'll have my couple bags and I'll leave them either like in the utility room or I'll have sort of a staging area like maybe on the back porch or the front porch so that those critters can kind of like disembark. Like let's get out of here. So that you're not, you know, bringing a whole bunch into the house. But you know, they're moving fast. They don't, they don't want to. They don't want to go inside either. Uh, but I think that that's everything. I hope that this was um, helpful and/or informative, and that uh, maybe you, you know, put on your boots and social distance and get out there and um, collect some nettles and, and make some tasty things. I hope you are staying strong. Um, look out for yourselves. Look out for each other and. Um, just be super nice to yourself right now. It's a hard, it's a hard time. Well, I mean, I felt very emotional when I just said that. All right, I love you. Bye.